So here's the new Harbor Freight Bauer Jigsaw. And I'm going to try it out for the first time. Got a fresh 3 amp hour battery in it. Just put the blade in it. I'm going to check it for square. I did have to tighten up the screw here, which is your angle adjustment. And it was kind of kind of loose when I took it out of the box. So I tightened that up. Not a big deal. Let's check this blade. See how square it is right out of the box. Uh, it's not square. Let's see. Kind of hard to do one-handed. Uh, there we go. Let's try that. Uh, it's decent. It's not perfect, but it's decent. Let's see how this thing runs. Uh, it's got a laser guide. Uh, it's bright out here, so you can see it. Uh, we'll see how close that cuts. And we'll see how long it runs. It's also got some, I guess, speed settings. And I'm just using the clean wood 10 teeth per inch blade in some mahogany. It's one inch thick. Here's what we're going to cut. We've got some one inch thick mahogany. And I guess it's butcher, butcher block. We're going to be making a coffee table. Uh, but we got to cut out this is my template. It was laser cut, so we're gonna cut out four pieces that look just like this. And the inside of the cut will actually be the outside of the table. And then this piece, once it's cut out, will go up underneath. So I'll be laminating two pieces together to make it two inches thick. Uh, so we'll see how this new uh, Harbor Freight Jigsaw does and test it out so I've only cut I don't know three inches and it spit this blade out once but that's probably my fault I didn't have it engaged all the way but that three inches took I don't know 30 35 seconds so not very fast so I'm gonna put this much more aggressive blade in and see how much quicker it goes well I screwed up a little bit you can see right here and right here so my cut started nice and square, but the farther I went, the more out of square it got, and I didn't realize it in time. And then I flipped the piece around and started cutting from the other side, and you can look at that terrible mismatch. So my piece is a little messed up now, so I'm going to have to move everything and make this table uh, about a quarter inch shorter than it was going to be, which I guess isn't a big deal. But here's what happened. I had set this up to be nice and square, as you saw, but when I locked it in, this whole guide slides forwards and backwards like this. Well, it's got little teeth. If you can see right here, these little teeth need to be locked in place or as you're cut, when you're cutting, it can grab and beat itself to death for a second and move that guide. Now you can see I do not have them engaged and that's my fault. I just didn't know. So you live and you learn, I guess. So here, we'll flip this lever get it back to square well it's supposed to slide uh, let's see mm, what's going on here doesn't want to move all right I had to loosen that screw get these teeth engaged and then retighten the screw so there was no other way it was going in so that's a little bit of a pain it's not great it still has a little play even though it's tight but we'll see if it works better now well now I've cut about 12 more inches and noticed this pin that holds this guide in place is falling out and it's not threaded I don't know how it's supposed to be held in place I guess I'll have to go back and look at the other videos I took and hopefully I can see let's hold that in if it's a sir clip or snap ring or what it is I don't know but it's falling out now not great well the pin is just crimped in there and obviously it wasn't crimped enough so I guess I can either 
try to crimp it more, drive it back into place, try to paint it over, but it's kind of hot. I'm not very impressed so far. Here's a little bit of a more clear view of the issue. So I'm going to attempt to fix this myself. We'll see how that goes. Plan here is to set this pin on this chunk of steel and then hammer on the exposed top side to flare it out some because it wasn't flared enough from the factory in China when they punched it there. So let me try this real quick. Well, that did the trick, flared it out nicely. Got a little too aggressive and got it too tight. That little guide wheel needs to be able to rotate freely. So I'm going to spin it and try to loosen it back up a little bit. Once I get that, we should be back in business. Here's a better view of these teeth and how they engage with each other. The thing I don't like is there's nothing to keep this thing from sliding forward or back and getting knocked off the teeth and then the angle can adjust to whatever it needs to because once it falls off the teeth it actually goes lower down and gets looser so not a very good design in my opinion And then there's the fact that even if it is engaged in the teeth, it can still rock. So you're solely based off your tension with that little guy. And all this stuff mounts to this plastic body, so it's just kind of flimsy in general. time cutting speed with the most aggressive blade on the fastest setting. Now keep in mind this is mahogany so it's fairly hard wood but it's awfully slow. We're still on the first charge of the battery. It's showing one out of three bars so we're going to go until it dies. And that's it the three amp hour battery is dead we made it three quarters of the way around this part uh, probably cut eight foot if I had to estimate of this one inch thick mahogany pretty hard wood um, decent battery life I guess I don't know I don't have many cordless tools but other things I didn't talk about is this little safety switch here you have to push that in before oh, it's back alive you have to push that in before you can engage it and you can push it either way which is nice so it's ambidextrous um, this is the little laser don't really care for it because it's kind of useless uh, if this was a chop saw or something with a big circular blade and you need to know exactly where that blade is going to land that's fine but something where you're tracing a contour I don't really see the advantage of having the laser. Uh, some I've used have a little air pumper that blow air right here because this thing, all these, uh, all this sawdust really does build up right there and I'm constantly blowing it out of the way so I can see my line. Um, and another thing, this thing has developed a pretty nasty noise. I'm not sure if it's going to pick up on camera or not, but... Uh, not a pleasant noise sounds like it's eating itself alive inside 
Uh, that being said, I'm going to charge the battery again and try to finish this project with this tool. But honestly, I'm probably going to return it because it was $60, which isn't a lot, but it's also broken twice since I've had it and tried to use it for the first time. So not very happy with it, but that's my honest review on it. I had high hopes and I was let down.